you need to think about what you say. And in many times, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Uh, yes. Yes. And and that's so important. And so if you can you can say things in a reasonable way and let people know it's this is not personal, this is business reality, or this you need to put a context, frame it. Yeah. But I, I have found to be, you know, just be thoughtful, careful about the words that I use, and then frequent and also available. So I people, if you're the leader of a business, you're running, you're running a small business or large business, you have to be around. All right, everybody, we're back on another segment of Intentional Money Matters. And I'm excited for this one because, uh, Harry, you've had a very, very successful career. You've done, you've hired a lot of people, <laughs> you've fired people, you've, you've built divisions, you've written books, you have a ton of wisdom. And I remember when we first met, um, being blown away by your ability to listen, ask questions, and then give really good advice. And so we're going to go through the seven lessons learned to, to get a great job, to keep it, and to grow professionally. And I, I can't think of a better person to uh, articulate this because if people have been following these segments, they know that you think in checklists, you think in frameworks, you think and you do a lot of study. So I'm excited to dive into this with you. All right. Well, thank you, Caleb. And uh, for those of you that, that haven't followed my background, I was the first person in my family to actually graduate high school. First one that went to college, first business leader in my entire family tree, and first multimillionaire in the whole group. And uh, I started out 12 years old with my lawn mower cutting, uh, I had my lawn route on Saturdays and took care of a few people in my neighborhood and have worked through. And a lot of times what people will ask me is, okay, that's a, and that's a thumbnail sketch of, of what I've done. I've worked around the world, done a variety of different things. And people ask like, what, what are some of the lessons that you've learned? And I think these lessons, as I talk, as I talk about them, they can help you improve yourself as a as a business person a business leader as well as a as well as personally I, I think it works there so the first thing for me as you look at things i've learned is you've got to have skills and skills are so important and today as we've discussed in other segments companies are hiring skills they're paying for skills so you really have to focus on getting those skills and I, I always did that. And I believe what you do is I try, I believe, I'm a firm believer in education, lifelong learning, and then taking on different assignments or taking a little bit of risk yeah. in terms of what jobs I took or what assignments I took to improve my skill set. And at the end of the day, I emerged with a skill set that was very broad and very, very much attuned to businesses looking to hire leaders. So skills, I think, number one, Caleb, you really have to learn your skills and it's, it's, it's fundamental. Love it. All right. Number two. And I, again, I, I read and listen to everything I possibly can. And the one gentleman I listened to a great deal was a gentleman named Dennis Waitley. Mm. And he wrote a number of different books. And uh, one of the things that he did, and number two for me is having a positive expectant attitude. Yeah. And what Dennis Waitley did was he studied winners in every field of endeavor. He studied Olympic athletes, business leaders, anyone who was successful in life. And the number one common characteristic that he found, they had a positive expectant attitude. They expected to win. Mm, they expected to do, they expected to do well. And I believe that's powerful. And you just have to be anytime. And I've, I've done this a number of times in my own career. I've seen it be successful. Someone will say the, um, the business that you're in, the market changes and something dramatic happens. Well, I, I would always turn to the team, turn to my team and say, okay, folks, all right, we can, we, we, we're a smart group of people. We can figure out a great income. So how do we win? How do we come up with that? I always took the more positive approach then, oh my God, they just changed the rules of the game on us. What are we yeah. going to do? Because, um, you know, there's always a solution that's there. There is a way to succeed and win. But you, if you're relaxed and you're confident and you expect a positive outcome, you're more likely going to get that than to, than to completely freak out and lose it. You know, positive people also live longer. So why is there so much negativity? It's like, <laughs> man, um, I, I feel like gratitude it needs to be practiced across the board because when you're grateful, 
you it's much easier for you to be more oh. positive and i do think there is that that there i know people that are very positive but they really are not thinking about winning but if you can kind of tailor the expecting to win but seeing seeing the life through a lens of positivity like what an amazing life number one and then i want to be around people like that if i had business opportunities or mm -hmm. um if i was going to um give raises i would want to give that money or opportunity to the people that were positive, that were winners. And so you can see that it's not just one of these like coincidences. It actually, if you think about in your own life, the people that you like being around the most are probably uh, people that are positive and expect to win. So I love that that's a part uh, and something that you've articulated. Oh, absolutely. And I think you want to win as a team. I mean, how do we win as a team? How do we work together to win as a team? And let's cut out all the political nonsense and, and all the drama. Drama is terrible. Yeah. It's debilitating. How do we just focus on winning as a team? How do we work together to do that? And, and I'll be straightforward with you. You be straightforward with me. Let's work together. We can do this together. It'd be a lot of fun. And I, that's been a driver for me. So the second thing or second action is that positive expectant attitude. The third thing, and I, this is a personal thing with me, is preparation. I think that you really, you know, to be competent and to succeed in your job or your profession or any aspect of your life, you have to prepare. And, and you have to be open to other people's knowledge, skills, input, ideas. So study, preparation, reading, trying to get a better grip of the situation, and also being open to change your mind. So I think preparation is so important. And I embraced that my entire career. Uh, a new job, a new area. Um, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll laugh at this, Caleb, maybe you won't. But uh, as I started the financial verse, I designed my own website. Yeah. And I learned how to program it and I got yeah. the particulars together, got it all done. And people were saying, you did what? I said, yeah, it's, it was, it's actually a lot of fun. So I know, I know how the nuts and bolts work. I got it done, but that was a good thing. And so I prepared because I wanted the people that went to my website to, to appreciate the content, the quality of what I was doing, but preparation is so important. So number three is preparation. Now, number four is one I've learned from the author, Ken Blanchard, yep. uh, the one minute manager. But he had a saying that I thought was really great. Feedback is the breakfast of champions. Feedback is the breakfast of champions. So if you are working in a team or if you're working for a corporation or if you're in a, your, your significant other, how am I doing? What can I do better? And, and sometimes it's hard, but feedback should not be personal. Feedback is feedback. So if you can just learn to take it impersonally. Yeah. And you could be, you'll learn and grow. So if you can take that feedback and use it, yep. you'll become much more effective and successful. Here's what I'm going to add to what you said. I believe self-awareness is a lost <sighs> art and it's so, so valuable. Do, would you say that people that are most self-aware are self-aware because they're willing to listen, they're willing to get feedback and they're humble about it? Because yep. you could be a jerk and be like, you give me feedback and I'm like, oh, Harry's a mean, mean person that doesn't like me and all this stuff. And then I cut you out of my life. Obviously, that's not great. But if I like learn from your feedback, um, I'm just going to be more self-aware and a better communicator and a better leader. And so I just want to highlight that for people because I feel like a lot of times we feel like feedback is bad. It like increases our blood pressure when we even think about it. But if you think about it from an abundance standpoint, um, man, it, it's one of the best ways to become self-aware. I'll give you a great example. I had a gentleman who worked for me was one of my managers. And he, I don't know if you remember the neutron bomb that they used to have. That was the bomb that they dropped that killed all the people, but all the structures stayed up. It just killed people. It was meant to make war less costly. He was my neutron manager. Assignments and tasks would get done wonderfully, but all the dead bodies would be around of all the people on the team that he worked with. Oh no. And so I had to sit down with them and say to him, look, you are a fantastic task person, but the people here want to kill you. <laughs> no I pun intended, it, right? <laughs> no, I don't it. I said, but I think it's a good idea. I think you need to go somewhere else and start over again with that awareness. And I think you're going to be really successful if you do. So naturally, this gentleman was not happy with me and yeah. gave me, uh, he was really unhappy. About a week later, comes in, says, thank you. You were the first person in my whole business career who's been honest with me. And 
I'm going to do that. And actually he went off, he went off and had a great career. He got a couple of great other positions. I helped him actually get another, I helped him yeah. get another job. He's a good, I mean, he did great work, yeah. but that feedback was life-changing for him. And we all need that. I've had instances where I've gotten coaching or feedback that's really helped a great deal, yeah. but you have to be open and you have to be willing to take it and take action. So feedback is the breakfast of champions Love that. is number four. Now, number five, and this is a Dennis Waitley, uh, Dennis Waitley principle, and I totally believe in it. Failure is fertilizer. And what I mean by that, Caleb, is that you will learn more from your failures than you will from your successes. And so as you're looking at your career, you're going to make, you're going to, you're not going to do every uh, assignment correctly. Mm -hmm. And if you have a failure, you need to sit down and look at it and say, why did I fail? Yeah. Did I not prepare? Did I not treat my team members appropriately? Did I, was I not humble? Did I, what did I not do that I could have done? And if you can make this, those course corrections, if you will, you'll become a much more powerful and effective person in your business life and in your personal life. Because we all make mistakes, we're human. But you have to learn those and then put them to work in, in trying to be better. But failure is fertilizer is a great one. And people get a kick out of that one. But I think Ken Blanchard's right. Number six is uh, on our hit parade is learn to communicate. Mm. And um, that's an interesting one. Yes, it is. Right? Being married so for seven months, I can highlight it and say, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, or, or you can fire uh, 6,000 people on a Zoom call. Oh, man. Or you could, or, or <laughs> <laughs> which, by the way, people are, better.com has no affiliation with betterwealth.com. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was the most bizarre thing I've ever witnessed and horrible communication. You wonder why a company that's, that's quote unquote successful would do something like that. Yeah. And, and, and I think what you have to do is if you in communicate, I follow one rule in communication. I treat people like adults and I'll tell you a great story. I ran a company a number of years ago, uh, Caleb, one of the first things I had to do was let 50% of the people go. So, uh, I communicated to them, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, we have to let 50% of you go. We're going to put you through a change management program. We're going to set you up with ways that you can get your resumes and other things in order. And uh, here's the end date. And, and I did that and people screamed at me. They said, you can't do that. These people won't work. They'll, they won't put forth the effort needed. They'll just, you're going to be in trouble. Our productivity went up sub substantially. Everybody worked all the way through to the end date. We were able to place 90% of the people in jobs because everybody started helping each other. Cool. And, and I still get emails from people thanking me for firing them. Wow. Because we Gives communicated it. We treated them like adults. We yeah. said, look, here's the reality. I mean, in an adult relationship, when you're running a business, sometimes you can tell people everything they need to know. Sometimes you can't because yeah. there are restrictions. But look, I'm going to treat you like an adult. You're not going to be surprised. And, and so coming up and then being able to communicate to your employees, to your supervisors, to your other constituencies, you just need to be an effective communicator. And I think that really resonates. And that can be with your customers too. And I feel like this could be a whole segment that we could do, um, but communication 101, any, any principles that you live by, any books that you would recommend, like communication is so important and I feel like we're not doing it justice by just talking about it right, like quickly. Obviously there's so much more, but anything that you want to like include when it comes to being a better communicator. I just, I think thoughtfulness. I mean, think if you can, if you, you, you need to think about, what you say. And in many times it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's so important. And so if you can, you can say things in a reasonable way and let people know it's, this is not personal, this is business reality, or this, you need to put a context, frame it. Yep. But I, I have found to be, you know, just be thoughtful, careful about the words that I use and then frequent and also available. So I, People, if you're the leader of a business, you're running, you're running a small business or large business, you have to be around and people, yeah. you have to be able to talk to people and communication occurs at so many different levels in the organization. And you just need to make sure that everybody knows you're free to talk and free to exchange information and ideas. 
And if someone at the, a new employee's got a great idea, we want that. Yeah, That's fantastic, it. right? Stuff like, but th those are, I think, uh, keys. And we can talk more about effective communication later, but I think those are things, uh, Caleb, that you, you take a look at, all right? How to Win Friends and Influence People by Derek Dale Carnegie. Huh? Highly recommend that book. I, I read it when I was 17 years old and it just, again, it's nothing, nothing crazy, no like secret techniques. It's just like caring deeply for people, seeking first to understand, not reaction, not don't be reacting um, and, and really like listen to people and you'll be shocked how that will translate. And so thank you for such a great story and then uh, bringing that up. Well, there's a number of places too, Caleb. I mean, Stephen Covey's always been good for me. I mean, seek first to understand them, be understood. I mean, there's, there's, there are a number of people who have influenced me over the years, but I think if you can do that in an employment context, people will know that you communicate with your teammates, you communicate with your, with your, your boss, your supervisor, no one gets surprised. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's effective communication. It's well thought out. It's just not thrown out there. And, 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 you know, I always tried to be perceived as a trusted partner, wherever I, whatever I did, be it with my employees, be it with my, you know, my, my, my subordinates, my superiors and my peers, you want to be a trusted partner. You don't want to surprise anyone. Yeah. So I love but, it. And, and that gets to our seventh item for today, which is to be authentic and be yourself. And this is probably the hardest one um, for me, or initially, it, it took a while. To be authentic, you got to be relaxed. You have to be able to talk through issues. You got to be able to tell people, look, I don't, I, I don't feel comfortable about that. I don't see it. I don't understand it. You know, you really need to just be relaxed about what you do and um, calm <laughs> and, you know, breathe watch your heartbeat. You know, you, you, you can do those things. Just take it easy, take a deep breath. We'll get through this, but you have to be authentic about it. And people have yeah. to know that, wait a minute, he's going to, he, he or she is going to give me a straightforward thought, straightforward opinion. Um, they'll tell me why. And um, they're relaxed about it. And people can feel good about who they're dealing with versus you'll do this because you, know, you don't want to be the butthead. I mean, I just, so just be a relaxed individual. And I think today, especially in the team settings that we're in, yeah. you need to be a key member of the team and you have that in the better wealth team. I mean, you, you know, you got right hand Dan, you got all people have roles. They're authentic. Mm -hmm. They know what they're doing, how they put forth different things. Yeah. And I think that's what we all have to do. Authentic, you know, little, authentic Little did you know, you just gave the best relationship seven seven steps to having a great relationship <laughs> as well, along with getting a job, keeping it, and growing. So just in summary, skill set can't. I mean, we we had a whole. We've talked a lot about this, but invest in skills, potentially reskill, upskill, do whatever you can to understand that that is ultimately the foundation of where salaries and relationships are going to uh, mm -hmm. and opportunities yeah. are going to be. Um, that, that's really the foundation because you can be an amazing person, but if you don't have any skill sets for us to hang our hat on, it's going to be tricky. Um, having a positive expectant attitude. I've never heard it articulated that way, but I love that. Um, and I think people need to double down on that, uh, preparation. Um, I think of Kobe Bryant for some reason, like just mm -hmm. his ability to practice and his, um, I think there's so many amazing players oh. and there's amazing people that show up just because of the work and inspiration that he's had on their life. Um, you know, being willing to get feedback, I think it's so important. Um, being, knowing that failure is fertilizer. Uh, I love that, especially, uh, I wouldn't necessarily call myself a farm boy, but I grew up <laughs> in the country and we definitely had to pull weeds. And so, yeah. um, I love that analogy. Learn to communicate. Could not agree more with that. Um, seek first to understand. Um, put yourself in other people's shoes and like, you'll be amazed oh. how that's not just going to help your relationship, but Absolutely. Help you in the workplace and be authentic. I, I appreciate that, man. I think the authenticity, like back in the day, wasn't the advice almost not to be authentic. And I love that nowadays we're valuing that at a huge, huge level. Um, life is way too short to go work at a place 40 plus hours and not be yourself. So. Yeah, it's it's it, yeah, it used to be a lot of companies, you know, there was the stereotype of what behavior, what approach you had to follow and so on. And I kind of was a little different. I, I've been different a while and I just wanted to do things. I wanted to treat the people fairly. I, I wanted to treat them like adults. I wanted to let them know if I could let them know something I would. I wouldn't surprise them. And, and what I found through all these things 
is it just all this reduces drama in that business relationship that you have? And I think if you look at studies, empirical studies, drama saps 65% of the productivity of a business. Oh, wow. And if you can be a drama-free employee who understands things, can communicate, get things done, or a drama-free leader, your team's going to do a lot. You're going to get a lot more done. Everybody will be a lot more relaxed. And in today's world, we have all these different things going on. Someone's got COVID. Oh, no, they don't. Someone's got a childcare issue. No, they don't. You know, you yeah. got to be able to move, go with the flow, understand those things. And if you do, people will do so much to work with you and for you to get things done. Loyalties created and ultimately success. I appreciate that a ton. Harry, how can people connect with you uh, and just get connected with your podcast, your books that you're yeah. writing and I know that you write frequently. Um, how can people and in, in just this Better Wealth community be plugged into what you're up to? Yeah, so you can go to the uh, financialverse.com website and you'll see all the particular things that we do. The books that I've written, uh, the press clippings, the podcast are all accessible there. And um, and I write an, I also write uh, some byline columns for some of the financial planning magazines in the country. So you can access all those through the website. Love it. I love it. And that will also be in the show notes. And if you're watching this on YouTube, it will be uh, in the notes as well. We appreciate you. We appreciate um, the just the research that you do and, and the, the wisdom, the seven steps of wisdom. I would love to hear from you. What, what was the biggest takeaway? Um, <laughs> I think for me, I, I really like failure is fertilizer. And I think I also love that you articulated having this positive attitude to win. So those I can't choose between those two, but those are both my favorite. And I'm definitely going to share this with some um, of my friends who are looking to be successful in the workforce. I think this one, this one clip is really, really going to help them reframe what's important to them. Great. Well, thank you, Gabe. It was great being with you today.